And hello, fellow gamers. I am back once again. I'm doing uh, some more Fairchild Channel F uh, gameplay. Uh, although I'm decided to start this one uh, a little bit differently than what I usually do. I don't have a game in the system right now, and I'm just running the system uh, with the built-in software uh, because I actually wanted to show you the games, and I don't have to put the game in just to take it out at the beginning of the thing. So um, I found out that uh, my picture-in-picture -picture box actually has a very neat capability that just lets me push a button and flip the two feeds. So I can um, actually hold stuff up to the camera and show it to you, and you might actually be able to see it. <laughs> so we're going to try that out right now. Uh, push the magic button. And uh, what we have here is the Fairchild Channel F Video Cart 2 box and cartridge inside. Uh, back up a little bit so you can see it a little better. That's the, uh, yeah, there's the entire thing fitting there, right there in the shop. And uh, this is a uh, video cart two. Obviously, they were all given numbers. Uh, they were all, all produced by Fairchild. Uh, this one has Desert Fox and Shooting Gallery on it. Um, on the back, we have a couple of screenshots of the two games and description. I'll zoom in there. <laughs> zoom <laughs> it means I just bring the thing closer to the camera. Anyway, um, see uh, Desert Fox there on the left with a screenshot and description. It says. You sneak up on the enemy, but ram a mine instead. Your tank is immobilized. The enemy fires, he hits, and outfoxes you. The fox. Well, that's kind of a shitty way of describing the game. It's like, hey, play this game. You're going to suck at it. Okay, we're here. We have a shooting gallery. Electronal, gr electronic rifle versus dead ducks. Dead ducks, huh? <laughs> that's kind of gruesome. Uh, rifle repositions after every shot. Okay, so... Um, we can uh, pop this open. Cartridges have end labels. Very nice. The uh, end labels display the games that are on them as well. So once you have the game in the system, you actually have to push the number button on the cartridge to start a game. You know which one you're going to play because they're listed right there in order. Desert Fox and Shooting Gallery. Alright, open it up. There's one of the cartridges up close. And you can see in comparison to my hand right here, and I do not have small hands. <laughs> zoom way out just to get that fucking thing in the shot. This thing is enormous. This has some of the biggest cartridges I've ever seen. Um, I have no idea why they're so big. Maybe because inside uh, they need a lot of space for the the, uh, the ROM chip or something. So um, the label is it's a little bit kind of screwy because you know it's old. The, the glue is starting to go. But still very colorful label. Uh, shows you what the games are. Pseudo screenshots, be Desert Fox and Shooting Gallery. It says uh, Video Cart 2 down there at the bottom. Uh, the other cartridges that came after they renamed the system from the Ver Fairchild VES Video Entertainment System to the Fairchild Channel F, they say Channel F at the top. And I actually have another one. The other game I'm going to play in this session is right here. Let's see, they say Channel F at the top. Also, later issue cartridges show the instructions for the game right there on the cartridge, which I've, which I've commented on in my previous live stream. It was uh, ahead of its time, I believe, to put the instructions right there in the cartridge because they knew people were going to lose the box, they were going to lose the instructions, and they wouldn't know how to play the game. So, um, also, um, the cartridges go in to the system this end first. Let's see if I can get that better in there. It's a little weird for me because it's mirrored what I'm looking at there. Um, but when you push the it, push the cartridge into the system, it has two catches on it that kind of grab onto these two little tabs here. And this pulls the end of the cartridge open like that. And there's the contacts. And that's the PCB that actually plugs into the system. So anyway, I guess that's enough gabbing about shit. So uh, let's put this into the system. Push the switcher button. Switch back over to that. And I think the system was still on while I plugged that in. That was not a good idea. <laughs> so I turn that off and back on just to be safe. And hit the reset. Ah, shit, did I just blow it up? I might have just broken it. Hang on. Let's pop it out and put it back in and see what that does. And 
looks good, but I'll do a reset anyway. Okay. So now we are going to play Desert Fox. So push button number one for game number one. And I did uh, actually read more of the instructions, uh, the instruction manual that came with the system, which is this thing here. I'm already sitting down, so I'm not going to push the magic button again. <laughs> um, but uh, it does say what these questions mean. It reminded me what they mean. Uh, the S does indeed mean start the game. Uh, you can also choose, when you see the S prompt, to uh, push either one, uh, to push one on the system, or two on the system. If you push one, you can change how long the game is going to be played. So, uh, if you push one, that says T, T means time. After you do that, you push one of the, th one of the four buttons on the system again to specify how long you're going to play the game. Um, and... I don't know, two minutes? Because on the system, the time says 2, 5, 10, and 20 above the four buttons. So, okay, I guess say 1. It goes back to S. We see we've established a time of two minutes down there at the bottom. And uh, we can then, once we're back to the S prompt, we can hit the 2 button to select the mode. And... Uh, in the manual, it actually said that the, m the M stands for movement, and this is how you specify the speed. So, uh, so I don't know, like, 1 through 4, which is fastest. Let's actually check the manual. Let's RTFM. Uh, let's see. Motion, asking you how fast you want it to go. 1 is for the slowest, and 4 is the fastest. Okay, since I'm probably going to suck at this, I'm going to say 1 giving me the slowest speed. Now it says the S prompt again, which means I can hit 4 to start the game. And here we go. Uh, in this game, you're the little tank things that are kind of in the corner. You can rotate the stick to rotate your gun, and you can uh, tilt the stick to move in a direction. So you'll see instantly that this game actually supports... Can I get it to do it? Circle strafing? <laughs> Yes, sort of. <laughs> oh, that's instant. That's awesome. And so the goal here is just to get over to the side and shoot the other guy. This is a two-player game, supposed to be. So I'm just shooting the shit out of a guy that can't defend himself, so that's fun. And he'll, he never dies. You can shoot him forever. It's counting up the number of times that I hit him, though. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it is not counting up the number of times that I've fired. It's counting up the number of hits. Presumably when the timer runs out, and whoever has the most hits scored at that point is the winner. And what happens if you shoot these? They sort of block the shot, but if you move just a little bit, you can still kind of get through. <laughs> and what happens if you hit these things? It does not like if you hit those things. <laughs> You cannot run over the bushes. I'm going to go up here and gobble some of these dots that don't do anything. These are just graphical glitches. Because uh, my Fairchild Channel F is not quite um, in perfect shape. All those little blue dots that you see up around this upper right hand corner are all gra graphical glitches. But they're only graphical glitches. They don't interfere with the gameplay. So, uh... I guess I will continue hitting this guy to see what happens, waiting for the timer to run out. Oh, watch this. I found this out earlier, too. Yeah, kill the hell out of him! <laughs> this is how you get fucking points. wonder if I can roll over the score thing. I guess we'll find out, huh? It does roll over. <laughs> okay, well, I want to get that up as high as possible. Can I get closer? Holy shit, now I'm killing him. <laughs> Look at that shit. Yes, I'm a badass at this game. Okay. <laughs> 18 seconds to go. I'm going to go back up here and pretend that I didn't do any of that bullshit. <laughs> I can shoot the shit out of my own barrier. <laughs> and maybe it'll give me a happy little jingle here at the end. Nothing. <laughs> it just gives me the S prompt again. That's kind of boring. Uh, okay, well. 
I think we get the gist of Desert Fox. Reset. And we're going to try game two. Shooting gallery. Now you remember what it said on the back of the box? That, uh... The, uh... I'm, I'm that paddle thing right there, the uh, the diagonal line that's sort of near the upper left-hand corner. And what I'm supposed to do is fire and try and get the, my shot to hit the thing. And it does. It works. And then it moves the paddle and I can shoot again. Uh, like it said on the back of the box, I cannot move the paddle at all. All I can do is just shoot and then it repositions. And it does bounce off the side, or on, off the bottom rather. Gotcha. Hey, it, it changed angles. Okay, so that's the thing that it does. I did not see that in my in my testing. That's a feature, I guess. It's a new thing. Yeah, got it. Okay, so that does provide some variety. Heck is the angle that it sets you at changes the angle of your shot. And the way I'm positioned right right now, the only way to hit that thing is to bounce it off the ceiling. Or off the edge of the arena, or whatever that is. <laughs> that was luck. There we go. Huh. <laughs> that was close. That almost didn't work. You can probably hear me pushing down on the plunger on the the controller. <laughs> this is one of those games where timing is important, so for some reason I think that if I push down on it harder, it will work better. <laughs> that, like, maybe it'll get there faster or something, I don't know. It's the Fairchild Channel F equivalent of, um, of playing an NES game like this, and then you're, like, tilting back and forth and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> hey, we got some people in the chat. We have Isaiah Rivera, who I don't think I've seen before. Welcome. And Jorm Weir is back. Excellent. Isaiah says, hi, hello. Jormware says, exploits. <laughs> uh, Isaiah also says, how are you? I am fantastic. Jormware says, hello. Hi. Okay, so um, I think we get the gist of shooting gallery. So this time I'm actually going to turn the console off before I fuck around with the cartridge thing. Although I did learn something. I, that means that uh, I can safely plug in a cartridge without blowing the whole system up and without blowing up the cartridge. So I'm going to put that neatly back into its box. I didn't pay a lot of money for these Fairchild Channel F cartridges either. I think the most expensive one I uh, bought was $15, and that included shipping. Now we're going on to Video Cart 13, which is... I already forgot what I'm playing. Uh, Robot Wars and Torpedo Alley. Customary reset. And game number one, Robot Wars. Uh, this one actually prompts for an M. I'm going to say slowest. <laughs> Jormor says I won't be able to stick it out the whole night. Uh, this will actually not probably not be a very long stream, so um, I don't anticipate this being much longer than probably another 15 minutes, because these games are very simple. And I didn't line up a ton of games to do it this time, either. Okay, so, um, if I remember correctly, I'm supposed to use the right paddle in this game. Right controller, I should say. And I am that weird kind of darker greenish looking thing that's sort of in the middle towards the bottom. 
and as soon as I move, all those other uh, Star Trek Enterprise thing looking things will come flying at me. And I think the object is to get them to lure them into those uh, blue boxes. Oh yes, this is much, much more manageable <laughs> than when I was testing. Because I didn't change the speed when I was testing. Yay, I won! Okay. Onward to round two. When I was testing, I just went with the default speed, which I guess is all the way up. And it was, it was insane. Things were flying across the screen at breakneck speed. Yay, I won two rounds. <laughs> On to round three. Are they multiplying? There we go. That's three rounds. <laughs> I don't know why this game uses the right controller when most games use the left one. It'd be funny if it was because of some kind of... Uh, deficiency in the design. I am noticing something here. It's if, if I touch one of those things, the one of the squares disappears. So if I take too many hits, then there's no way I can kill them anymore. So yeah, I lost that round. Damn it. Apparently they can kill each other, which is nice. <laughs> Yes! That's five rounds. <laughs> Jormor says, Are you a human tricking robots into pools of water? I don't know. Could be. <laughs> uh, the, the primitive graphics in these games, actually good graphics for the time, but by today's standards, very primitive. Anyway, the primitive graphics um, in these old games leaves a lot to uh, interpretation and imagination, so they can really be whatever you want them to be. Like, to me those pink things look like Starship Enterprises. I guess they're supposed to be the robots, like you said. I'm gonna say that I'm luring these things into the manufacturing defect chute. The place in the factory where if they build something broken, they drop it in the chute and then it disappears into the abyss. I don't know if those things actually exist, I kinda just made it up. Yes, kill each other. <laughs> this game has an early example of monster infighting. <laughs> I should just hide behind these things. I'll just stick right there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I guess the game just kind of goes on forever. I haven't tried pushing down on the thing or pulling up. It doesn't seem to do anything. And twisting doesn't seem to do anything either. Ha! I guess I'll get to ten. See what happens. <laughs> that one was an easy one. Yeah, so I think we get the gist of Robot War. Reset. Ah, my friend Sean is in the chat. Welcome, Sean. He says, best game so far. Uh, yeah, on a te just from a technical uh, perspective, uh, this game is actually pretty impressive. Uh, number two. And I already forgot what it is. What is it? It is Torpedo Alley. And um, I'm going to change the timing again to the slowest. No! I set a timer! <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Um, two? Yes. Set that to one. Okay. And then four to start the game. And I'm the thing in the lower right, actually. I can play... This is supposed to be a two-player game, I think. I'm switching to the left controller. You can only move left and right. You can tilt your gun by twisting the stick. Which works in theory, but I think that just adds a, a layer of complexity 
to the shooting, so I'm just going to keep it pointed straight up. Also, I cannot go any further on the right on the screen to the right than that, presumably so I don't tread into the other player's territory and interfere with their play. Or that could again be a technical limitation of the system. Maybe if like the two gun sprites are overlapping, that um, that it'll crash the system or something. <laughs> Or the score will start going up like crazy because it'll think that like my shots are colliding with enemy sprites, but they're not. They're colliding with the other player. Okay, I think we get the gist of this game. <laughs> Uh, I just got an idea of something fun to do, though. I'm going to reset, and I am instead going to play both of those games at the highest speed, just to see how insane it can get. Uh, we're going to play game number one, and we're going to set the movement at four. And then I have to switch back to the other controller. Now the cables are getting tangled. <laughs> okay. Whew. Here we go. That's it. I got the controller wrong. <laughs> I had it positioned wrong. Eh. Holy shit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. They kill each other fast. Oh, shit, they kill me fast, too. Mm. Yeah, get him, yes. <laughs> it's kind of intense. Like, it's all over and just, oh, I can wrap around. I didn't know you could do that. I wonder if I can wrap around on the, the left and right side, too. Yeah, indeed, I can. That adds a layer of strategy. <laughs> Jormor says, robots must hug all humans. Yeah, they hug you to death. <laughs> that is exactly what they do. And Sean says, now it gets good. <laughs> That ah, shit. Damn. That was a fast round. This gets crazy. I think I've developed a simple strategy. Go one direction, keep going that way, and try to lure them into the thing on your way. See? Like that. They seem to just kind of be staying horizontal with me, though. So, ah, shit! <laughs> the second I stop, one plows into me. See, when I was first playing this, and I was getting attacked, I didn't know that that was a bad thing, because the little beep sound that it makes when you get attacked is so cheerful and high-pitched. I was not paying attention at all. I was I think I was looking at the wrong sprite. Come on, come down here. That's it. Yeah shit. <laughs> God. <laughs> Man. Sometimes you get lucky because it looks like the positioning of everything is random at the beginning of each round. So t sometimes you get a good layout. Sometimes you get fucked. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go until one of us gets to ten. I need to... The reason why the game pauses at the beginning of each round is so that it, you can find where you, where you are on the playing field. And I'm not doing that. I should be doing that. Anyway, that's uh, that's Robot War on the fastest speed. So now let's try Torpedo Alley. Reset. Game number two. And we set the speed to maximum. And start. Holy Jesus tits. I 
I should just keep the paddle stuck down, <laughs> so I'm always firing. Yeah. Although that's not such a good idea because. Because, like, there can only be one shot on the screen at a time, and it's highly likely that you're going to get stuck into a pattern where all of your shots are missing, and therefore it's uh, taking the most amount of time. Jesus, God. Yeah, the plunger's getting stuck on the controller. I'm pushing it down to fire and it's getting stuck. Switching to the other controller. Switching to player one. Because the, the number one plunger works a little better. Do I get more points for hitting the one on at the top? Yes, I do. Because I, I wondered how Player 2 had gotten all the way up to 49, because I was like, I have not hit 49 things. I'm definitely not that good at this. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's Torpedo Alley maximum speed. Sean says that actually looks easier for timing. Uh, it is, uh, now that you mention it, because uh, effectively the game is more responsive that way. Jormor says, I like how crisp the white score numbers look. They almost look like they were added afterwards. Uh, yeah, the, the video output from the system is very, very clean. Like, I think it's, it's, it's definitely cleaner than my Atari 2600, and it's cleaner th than my ColecoVision. I don't know if it's as clean as the Intellivision or not, but... I mean, you can see a little bit of ghosting on the screen if you look ahead of the sprites, or to the right of the sprites. You can see just a little bit of ghosting going to the right. But other than that, it's pretty good. That's insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to go back to the first two games and see what those look like on high speed. So pop out number 13, and I'll pull number 2 back out, put that back in, and turn it on. Okay, game number 1, Desert Fox, and change the speed to maximum, and start the game. Now, is the guy moving faster? I can't actually tell. Maybe a little faster. Let's go all the way up in his face and see how much faster it is. <laughs> it's still fun, but I don't know if it's faster. Shame the... Shove the friggin' turret right down his fucking face. Eat that bitch. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's actually any different. still fun to to, mo to to move and rotate at the same time. That's something that you couldn't do on the Atari 2600 because uh, the joystick and the paddle controllers were separate on that system, whereas, of course, on this one they're integrated. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> uh, let's reset, and I'm going to try shooting gallery on maximum speed. Game number two, and set the movement speed to four, and start. Holy shit, that's fast! Of course, my shots are faster, too. The, it, it speeds up the entire game. This is instantly more intense. And you guys are getting this in glorious 60 frames per second, too. Because this is definitely using it, I can tell. Ah! Got it! <laughs> that was luck.
This is gonna give me a buzz or something. This is like drinking a freaking Red Bull. Actually, I wouldn't know. I've never had a Red Bull. Or any kind of energy drink. I figure the world's crazy enough without having it sped up. I don't even drink coffee. <laughs> or caffeinated soda. All I drink is tea, and even that's decaffeinated. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, you son of a bitch. Eat it! <laughs> is it counting the shots that I miss? I'm trying to miss! <laughs> See what it does. Yeah, it is. It counts it whenever it goes off the playfield. There's something very primal about this. I like it. It's like it reduces it to... The speed reduces it to just pure reaction time. Of which I clearly have none. Ha! Got it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's shooting gallery at maximum speed. I think we kind of get what's going on there. Jormware says, I agree with Sean, the faster is better, less waiting. Mm hmm Yeah, it actually, it does feel a whole lot better, playing faster. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the games I was planning to play, so I guess that's going to be the end of the recording. It's certainly been interesting. Um, I have uh, four more Fairchild Channel F cartridges to get through, so that's probably what I'll be doing next on my next live stream and recording. Uh, if you want to know when I am live streaming, uh, just check out my YouTube channel page there. It has a link to my Twitter profile, and I always announce on Twitter in advance when I'm going to be doing a live stream. You can also subscribe to me on the YouTube gaming app, and that will automatically give you a notification when I start streaming as well. So, uh, to the people watching on the recording, that's uh, the end for you and I, but uh, catch me next time.